Hey everyone, I wanted to take you through some changes that I've just made to my audio setup, which should improve the audio quality for my videos quite a bit. For the first maybe year or so of my channel, I had a complete garbage microphone that I just scavenged from some audio equipment parts that I had because my dad had gotten some stuff for recording his guitar. It sounded terrible, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think a few years after the start of my channel, I switched over to the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB, and I actually distinctly remember exactly when I switched over to it. It was in the middle of my antechamber playthrough. That was a pretty huge boost to the quality of my commentary. Well, the audio quality of my commentary. My actual commentary skills back then were complete garbage. So this is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. This is the very microphone I've used for so many years, and it's been super reliable. I love this thing. It does have some limitations and problems, though. The two major problems this has for the sort of work that I do is, well, the first one is that it actually contains all the circuitry to convert the analog signals that it gets from the microphone into a digital USB signal. It has all of that inside of it, hence the 2020 USB. So it's got all that conversion hardware inside of it, and then it just comes straight out as USB, which is very convenient. It means you don't need any sort of an audio interface at all, just plug and play. Now the problem with having all the hardware inside of it to do the conversion from analog to digital is that it's not very high quality. Because this microphone in total was, I think I paid about $100 for it at the time. It's a good chunk of change, but you're getting an entire microphone plus all the circuitry inside to convert the signal and... Well, the end result of that is that the hardware inside is just not very good. It's as good as they had to do it to, you know, make the thing sound decent, but it's not good with latency in particular. The reason latency is important is because when I'm doing something on my computer, like playing a game while also commentating into a microphone, you need headphones on rather than speakers because you don't want the game or whatever sort of audio that's coming from your computer feeding back into the microphone. So you, you pretty much have to use headphones. But headphones, of course, cover up your ears, which means you want to monitor the signal of the microphone so that you can actually hear what's being recorded by the microphone instantly in your headphones. That way you can actually hear yourself. And this thing is basically incapable of doing that. I mean, you could monitor the signal, but the problem is, no matter what, the latency is just too high for it to actually be usable. Because once the latency goes up to a certain point where it's a, an echo-type effect, where you're hearing what you just said 100 or 200 milliseconds after, it's completely unusable. I, I, I haven't even been able to speak a full sentence like that because it's so confusing and, and it just, like, messes with my head. I tried all sorts of solutions to try to reduce the latency as much as possible, reducing buffer sizes as much as possible to the point where the audio started crackling and getting all weird, but the main issue that I just could not overcome is the fact that I couldn't overcome the, the natural latency built into the hardware inside of the microphone, because I can't touch that. I can only do stuff with the signal after it's reached the computer. So this does not work for low latency monitoring of the microphone. The reason I was able to use this for so many years, even though I couldn't hear myself through the headphones, is that I made sure to always use open-backed headphones. They're, well, I guess exactly what they sound like. They are made specifically not to block audio from the outside world. And that allowed me to hear myself enough that I could actually record and, you know, make all the videos that I did for so many years. But it, it doesn't allow all audio in from the outside world, those types of headphones. There is some blockage. To the point where I've noticed over the years that I sometimes slur words because I can't quite hear what I'm saying, especially during louder moments in a game. So I do occasionally have trouble hearing myself, and I feel like I have to talk kind of loudly, which I think might actually be hurting my voice. So the latency was problem number one with this microphone. Problem number two is simply the fact that it's a condenser microphone. So there's two main types of microphones. There's condenser and dynamic. Um, and one isn't better or worse than the other. They're just different and good for different applications. A condenser microphone like this is very, very good at picking up every single little detail, no matter how tiny, no matter how far away. This thing will pick up an incredible amount of detail. Every little creak and groan that's happening in the room that I'm recording and this thing picks up. 
which can be very good, you know, depending on your application. But the problem with it picking up so much detail from me is the fact that there's lots of background noise in my room. You know, nothing extreme, but I live with my wife and it's a studio apartment, so when they do stuff, they're basically just in the one room, the same room that I am as I'm recording, which means all the little noises like, you know, a, a chair moving in and out and a, a table creaking and picking up stuff and setting things down, it picks up all of that very, very well. And it also picks up tons of mouse clicks and keyboard clacks as I'm playing, too. The other major type of microphone is a dynamic microphone, which is what this is. This is the new microphone that I just bought, the Rode Procaster. The big advantage of a dynamic microphone is that it has a really quick drop-off where if you're not very, very close, just like right up to the end of it, it will start to drop off really quickly. You'll get super quiet even if you're just six inches away. So it's very good at blocking out background noise like key clacks and room noise and all that sorts of stuff because it's far enough away that it's out of the kind of the hot zone which is just immediately in front of the microphone. These are the sorts of microphones, dynamic, that are used for stage performances. Because if you think about a singer performing up on a stage, there's an absolute amazing amount of noise going on. If you had a condenser microphone for that, it would pick up tons of that and it would feed back and just probably sound terrible. But a dynamic microphone is so insensitive to sound, you have to be so close to it that the singer can just get right up to the end of it and it won't pick up much background noise and it sounds good. The major disadvantage with dynamic mics is that if you're trying to record every little tiny detail, then, well, they won't do a good job at that. They're very good at recording the exact thing that you're pointing them at and that they're very close to, but if you want to get, for example, room sound or any sort of atmospheric sound, like if you're doing Foley work, then uh, I imagine a dynamic microphone would be pretty bad for that. But for my setup where I just need to record my voice and nothing else and I have background noise, a dynamic microphone is definitely a better way to go. I'm going to play some audio quality comparisons between the Procaster and the AT2020 in just a minute. Um, I just want to show you some major differences between them in their construction and kind of my first impressions. Uh, I always used to think this AT2020 was a serious bit of construction and really heavy and hardy, and it is. Don't get me wrong, this thing weighs, well, let me go weigh it. This thing weighs 346 grams. Yeah, I like how this thing is constructed. It's, this entire exterior is all very, very strong metal. It's super sturdy. I think it looks pretty good, pretty sleek. But it is nothing compared to the Procaster, which is just freaking absurd. Let me hold them both side by side. Look at the size difference. This Procaster is just ridiculous. It's like a baton. The Procaster weighs 697 grams. I have no idea if that weight is really important. It's probably overbuilt to hell, but damn, is this an incredibly sturdy and beautiful thing. I just love the markings on the side of it. I don't know, I just think it's really sleek and, and nice looking. I also prefer the fact that the, uh, what, we, what do you call it, the recording end, like the, what's considered the front of the microphone where you're supposed to actually speak into, is the front of the microphone. It's this part here. I like that because then it doesn't have to be in the way and like sideways or anything. It just has to point at you. That like, that feels right to me. Whereas with the AT2020, um, the hot zone of the microphone is actually the side. This is the front. That's the back as it says. This, you don't speak into there either. That will sound terrible. You have to speak into the front of it, which is a little bit weird. It's easier to speak into this and keep it out of the way of the monitors. Also, price-wise, I would expect this thing to be better just because it's more expensive. Uh, this was about 140 euros for me, which I guess is probably about 150, 160 USD. And when I bought the AT2020, it was about $100. Yeah, this Procaster probably cost about 50% more, and you also have to consider the fact that the difference in audio quality should be even bigger than that 50% cost difference because this microphone included in the price is all the circuitry to convert the audio into a digital signal. This one does not have any of that circuitry. It needs an external audio interface. 
Okay, let me roll some microphone audio quality comparisons now. This is a test between the two microphones without any background noise. They're both the same distance away from me, both very close. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica 2020 USB. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica 2020 USB. Now I'm gonna test how it sounds when I'm clicking my mouse and pressing keys on the keyboard while I'm talking, cause that's how it's gonna be most of the time when I'm doing playthroughs and recording videos. So I'm clicking my mouse. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. This is a test of the two microphones with a bunch of background audio happening in the room. Very aggressive background audio. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB. This is the Rode Procaster. This is the Audio-Technica 2020 USB. So let me show you how I have this thing connected, since it doesn't connect directly by USB. This uses an XLR connector, which is common for professional audio equipment. It's a fairly large three-pin type of connector. So the XLR connection goes from the microphone that's on my cheap mic stand, which I was actually worried about this cheap mic stand being able to physically support how heavy this thing is. And I mean, this is a garbage stand, but it's actually doing just fine. But anyway, the XLR connection goes from the microphone, it goes down and around, and it connects to one of the inputs of the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 second generation version. So this is the external audio interface. This is what's turn, what turns these analog signals into a digital signal that goes into your computer via USB. This thing was surprisingly easy to install. Uh, I just installed the drivers. I connected it via USB to my computer. It, that's the only connection that it has on the back at all. It's entirely powered by USB. And then I set this thing as the default recording and playback device for my computer. So basically every recording is going to go through this thing and also this is going to be the playback device. The reason this is the playback device uh, is because this thing can be used to mix your computer's audio with your microphone so that you can monitor your microphone in an extremely low latency way. This way you don't even have to send your microphone audio all the way to the computer and then back out so that you can listen to it. Instead, it just goes directly within this thing from the input over here and, you know, all the preamps and whatever stuff it does, and it just goes directly to the output, which is right here. So basically, if you're not currently using this thing to record in any way, and you just want to use your computer to listen to something, if you have direct monitoring off, which it is right now, that's on, that's off. If you have direct monitoring off, then this output here just acts as an output for your computer's audio. But if you turn direct monitoring on, then it mixes your normal computer audio with whatever you have connected, either the one or, or two things that you have connected. So that's my new audio setup. So you can look forward to audio in my videos with that new setup within the next week.